Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video and today we're going to talk about what are winning products and most importantly how to identify them. I'm going to base this entire video off of my previous winning products and what they all have in common. First, I want to show you two different stores that I'm currently scaling to prove that this concept works. Alright, here's one store in the past 90 days. Let me refresh. We have done over $155,000 in revenue in the past 90 days on one store. All right, here's my second store. And as you can see, we have done over $320,000 in revenue in the past six months. All right, let's dive into this and talk about what all my winning products have in common. I'm going to list a bunch of traits for these products. And no, they're not in any specific order. But these products all have a few of these. All of these are a combination of these. All of my winning products have some sort of unique selling proposition, meaning that there's something about these products that stand out and they're eye-catching. They might have a wow factor or they're just overall unique and not easily seen in stores like Walmart or Amazon or your local grocery store or department store. It's very important that a product stands out and is eye-catching to the consumer. Another huge point that these products all have is that they solve some sort of problem. Solving a problem can mean a wide range of things. It might be an emotional problem that makes them feel better, look better, or it saves them time, saves them money, etc. There has to be some sort of pain point that the product solves for the product to be desirable and make the customer have an impulse decision to buy the product from your store. All of my winning products in the past have had a very broad appeal, meaning that the consumer market for these products is very wide and could be applicable to many, many people. For example, you don't want to be selling bicycle helmets because only cyclists are going to be buying this product. Whereas if you sell an iPhone, every single person on the planet is going to want an iPhone. That was just an example, please don't try to drop ship iPhones. All my winning products in the past have had a very high perceived value. This is very important when you're drop shipping because you need those margins when you're selling. I like to sell my products for at least $20 profit, but most of my big winning products have had a $40 or more profit margin. And do not just forcefully put $40 on top of your cost of goods sold because it's not going to work. Your product needs to have a high perceived value, meaning that these customers think the price is actually a good price and the product itself is perceived to be a higher price. For example, Apple sells their AirPod Maxes for over $500, and I guarantee it costs them under $50 to source and produce wherever they make them from. All of Apple's products have a very high perceived value because of the value they bring to the customer. You need to find products that produce this feeling so when a customer goes to your store and sees the price, they think it's a really good deal because before they clicked on your store, they thought the price of their product was gonna be much more. And adding a 50% off doesn't immediately solve this problem, your product actually needs to provide value. Another key feature that all my winning products in the past have in common is that they have really good reviews. Yes, reviews on your stores are important, but even before that, reviews on Amazon or from AliExpress all have good reviews and it shows that the product quality is there. You need some sort of social proof on all your products so your customers are more inclined to buy. A winning product, most importantly, needs to be scalable. It needs to be capable of expanding to bigger and larger markets for more people to buy. Going back to my example of bicycle helmets, only cyclists are gonna buy this so you can't really scale to you know people that drive motorcycles or people that like running or exercising. Most broad products can be applicable to everyone and therefore are a lot easier to scale. It's very important that you're not testing and scaling saturated products. They just won't scale and they're probably not even gonna get sales when you're testing. You need to find products that have very low competition and you're the first person or the second or third person to sell it. It's okay to be the first few people to sell the product, but you can't be the hundredth person and you definitely don't wanna be the last person to sell it. When there's lower competition, there's less alternatives available for your customers to buy. This is why you wanna find products that aren't listed everywhere on Amazon. You know, there's a hundred different listings for the same product. It's okay if there's a few listings on Amazon, don't be scared of that, but you definitely don't wanna test something that's on Walmart, eBay, Amazon, and a bunch of different other places. All my winning products in the past have had really good ad creatives. The ad creatives really display the product in the first three seconds and are eye-catching and appealing to the customer. This will boost curiosity and make your customers click on your ad to go to your website. This is ideally how you drive traffic and get sales. With a good ad creative, it'll make the customer more likely to make an impulse purchase. The last thing that I want to touch on is having a good supply chain and making sure that the product quality is actually there. If you work with me, you get access to my supplier who sources all my products and handles fulfillment from China in about a one-week shipping time. Alright guys, that's it for this video i hope this really helps you a lot and you can apply this next time you're doing product research if you've had any unanswered questions from this video please book a call with me below and we can hop on a call and i'll be happy to answer any questions that you still have